Well, hey folks, welcome to the Wolf Den one more time. All right, what I am doing here is I've got out my entire supplies for making my strong arm rig. This is my strong arm rig right here. It's got a Dulock snap, a three way, Mason hard type nylon crimped to a swivel on the end, be it a ball bearing or bearing swivel. This is what I use day in, day out to hold my short leader that I tie to here about that long to a mustad hook. And then you can change out a bank sinker really fast. And this keeps it, because it's real stiff, this keeps your leader from getting tangled in your main line, which would be tied to that end of the cross lock three-way. I'm going to be going through this extremely fast because I got a lot of work to do. But I figured I would do a little rigging video for you. So this is my strong arm. I will put a link below in the video description. On a smartphone, it's a tiny little arrow about that big in which you have to click with a mouse's finger on your phone on the YouTube app, but on a real computer, you click where it says show more under this video. That is also known as the video description or the video details. I will put a link below of how I make my strong arms. I did a complete video giveaway of how I came up with this. It works for me. I used it, I R&D'd it for years and years and years, and then I finally let the cat out of the bag. But, as you may have seen in other videos, I sometimes don't use that because I'm going super LT. What I call LT is light tackle. And I want to use the least amount of lead to get the job done. I use half, quarter ounce, uh, three-eighths jig heads, very simple jig heads, just a ball-headed jig with a gold must, uh, eagle claw hook. I use a lot of those when I'm pitching uh, up into serious snaggy areas around here like Jetty Rocks. But if I want to LT with just customers with spinning rods in their hands, about the lightest that we'll get away with laying a bait on the bottom is a one ounce. I'll put a, another link in the video description of just this past week. Me and a customer, fantastic customer, long time customer, the Traveler, Traveler Bob, with us whacking and stacking the sheep, uh, I was about to say sheep's head, the bull red fish, not really big, but the teenagers in the 12 to 17, 18, 19 pound category. And uh, we were using my next favorite rig. And that is, and I made mention in that video that I absolutely despise rigging egg sinkers, sliding egg sinkers. I've never liked them because there's so much sort of rigging going on. So let me put on my reading glasses so I can actually see what I'm showing you. This is what I have found to be super easy. It's a swivel with, let me get some super light going here, swivel with a one ounce egg, but it has eyes on it. These are very, very difficult to find. And the one thing I don't like about these, these were made by Hurricane Saltwater Tackle. And what they did is they used steel eyes because they come from China or Taiwan or Thailand or somewhere in Malaysia or something like that. And instead of having brass, they use steel. So these are hard to find. And when I did find them, the price was right. So I bought a whole bunch. 
but at the same time, the price varies. And I've seen them in ridiculous prices. So I really like these. And the reason I like these better than an egg sinker is number one, when I have an egg sinker, and I'll get one right here because this is part of what I'm going to show you. Here's just your average bullet weights egg sinkers. Just a pack from Wally's World. You get a pound of them, 16 ounces, 16 of them, one ounce. Okay, dirt cheap, Wally's World. All right, so if I'm going to take an egg sinker, 90% of the time, here's what you're going to have to do. I'm going to use this big fat piece of mason hard type nylon material right here. You're going to have to thread it on. Then you're going to have to tie on a swivel. Then you have to cut and tie on a leader. And that makes three or more pieces. You've got this, the swivel, then the leader, then the hook. So it's like a three-piece, four-piece project. And it takes a little longer to put it all together when you're on a bouncing boat. All right? For me, everything's about fast, 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 fast. I want fast. That's the reason why I've developed my strong arm rig even. Because 99% of the time, only thing that's going to break is the leader that's off of here. We hardly ever lose these, and I leave these on my rods 24-7. So, I never liked the sliding egg idea. I, I don't fish for fish that care, okay? I've had redfish eat a bait on a tide that's running off the stern of my boat, and a current, and we th throw the bait out. It lays on the bottom. We're eating lunch on the front of the boat. It's sitting in the back of the uh, back of the boat in a rod holder, and I mean we're basically paying, playing you know Monopoly or something because nobody's paying attention really, even me because hey my customers are feeding me really well, so I'm up in the bow with them under the shade on the cooler with the spread out just munching along having a great time and somebody looks to the stern of the boat and goes hey Dave that line in the back of the boat's real slack. Well, I run back there, and I reel it up. And that redfish is under the boat. He done eight a bait in the current, 25 yards behind the boat, and ate the bait and is literally dragging anywhere from a three, four, five, six, or eight or 10 ounce bank sinker. Do you think those fish care? They don't care. They're mindless creatures that are just eating the bait and then swimming along to the next situation that they can get themselves into. So all this about, oh, sliding egg sinker so they can't feel it. That's all well and good if you're fishing for fish that care. 99% of the time, I'm not fishing for fish that care because they're feeding into extreme current anyhow, and that's what I'm fishing, so... They're going to eat the bait, and it doesn't matter. I don't need this sliding BS, okay? And I don't care. Go ahead, surf fishermen, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking what I do on my boat, St. John's River, Jacksonville, Florida, St. John's River Inlet jetties, all right? So I've always enjoyed these because I tie it on, I tie on a leader. Boom, done. Many times on my dash... I'll have pre-made leaders with hooks already sitting there. So if somebody loses the whole shooting match, all I do is grab one of these, tie the braid to here, or a mono shock leader. Many times I even have a mono shock leader. Okay. I'll tie it to here, tie on a leader. Bam, I'm in business. Time is money. Time is the essence of what we're doing because we got to keep baits in the water, right? So I love these. Well, I'm getting low on them. And again, I'm fishing. Just last week, I did damn near seven days in a row. Seven days in a row. I've had, let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday here to recover. I've changed my oil in my truck. I've revamped the boat, which is a whole nother video, um, into its winter styling, I like to call it. 
getting into the winter season where I can get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. I can get rid of a whole, and I want minimalistic tons of fishing room. So I've also done that today. So I'm getting lean on these. So here's what I'm sitting here making. I'm sitting here making my own. Basically, I am taking these one ounce bullet weight sinkers, egg sinkers, one ounce, and I am taking the makings of my, oh, come on, everything gets stuck. All right. I am taking the makings of my strong arm. I've got the crimps for the 80 pound mason hard type nylon. I've got tons of nice, perfect swivels. And I've got the crimpers. So what I'm actually doing is I am making my own fixed egg sinker. So this, what I just made, and this is very similar. All right. What I'm doing, and it's going to be difficult to see here because I'm making this a tighter Dick's hat band, is I'm taking my mason hard type nylon. And I am making loops and a crimp. Then the mason goes through the egg sinker to a loop and a crimp with a swivel on the end. So they're very similar. Of course, I like these better because it's just better. But these will do. These will do. Here's another one. It's got a little more slack in it. All right, look at that. All right, there's a little more slack. It's bumping into the crimps. I've got the crimps for 80 pound mason hard type nylon. I've got thousands of these uh, barrel swivels and I'm going to hurry up and do as fast as I can. I'm gonna do 16 of these and put them in the boat because I'd like to keep some of these around for my own usage. I really like these. And we're kind of burning these. You know, we're doing a lot of burning of these. So that's what I'm doing. All you need, if you are a follower of mine, if you're a subscriber, if you're a recent commenter, if you see the videos that I do, uh, you would have probably remembered this. If not, I've got a whole how-to tackle rigging playlist. Go to, my, go to my actual channel. Just watching one video, you're not learning nothing. Okay, I got tons of stuff, tons of stuff. I got like 668 videos, man. That's 10 years worth of grinding, grinding, okay? So you should have, if you were going to be making the strong arms and you have mason hard type nylon and then you have the crimps that fit, all you need is two swivels, two crimps, the mason hard time nylon and an egg sinker and now you can actually make what I call fixed eggs that's a fixed egg it's not going nowhere it's not sliding way to hell up our line and that's what I don't like I'm not wanting to have anything sliding up my line so the whole objective is to make them as tight as possible but you can have a little play in them like that I could tie this on tie on a pre-made leader boom <laughs> Out with a chunk of pogey or a shrimp on a light spinner and that's what it takes to hit the bottom many times if we're outside the jetties or whatever and we want to LT it light tackle it right that means light gear light hook light leader light line light sinker all right LT so all I'm doing is I am taking my fixings that I already have to make that but I'm doing that instead it's not as pretty. No, it's not as pretty. But you know what? The fish ain't down there inspecting your sinkers, folks. Okay. So, I'm sitting here putting them together. All right. I have got my... Got a video all about buying these on Amazon. 35 millimeter uh, film cases. These are absolutely fantastic, and I'll show you here in a second. I don't carry these on the boat anymore because I revamped something else. 
I have a video about buying these and putting all your small tackle in these. You could buy, I bought 60 of them, man. 60 of them for like 12, 13, 14 dollars off of damn Amazon. They come straight from China or they were actually, um, I believe these were fulfilled by Amazon in an Amazon warehouse that were here the next day. So I got them with labels on them. Mason, 80 pound strong arm crimps right there. And there's all my crimps. And what I also do, there's the crimp that you're going to need for 80 pound Mason hard type nylon. I buy the Bill Fisher double sleeved size 1.0, 1.0, 100 pack. I get these and I put them all in there. Okay. I leave the tag in there so I can remember what I have in here. All right. So there you go. Not everybody's going to be like me. I'm a factory when it comes to damn making tackle. Okay. Because we burn it like cordwood. We burn them like mass sticks. So, look at all them swivels. And I've got about five of these slap full of swivels. Then I've got one. Where is it? I got one full of nothing but BB swivels. What's BB? Ball bearing swivels, folks. Little tiny, tiny microscopic ball bearing swivels. Where are they? These are all the big ones. All right, either way. Either way. Well, I don't know where they are. But look at this. See? I even keep the tags of my swivels. These were tsunami swivels. Number six, 65 pound test, 52 a pack. Here's another thing. You always keep, always keep your tags so you can remember what to buy. Here's Bimini Bay. That's tsunami. Size 1.0, quantity 25 pieces. That's for crimps. Here's my Mason hard type nylon. Mason, 80 pound hard type nylon. The greatest stuff ever invented, folks. Then, I'll tell you, I'll give you another little hint. For really close cutting, like when I push this through and there's a little tiny tag on here that I have to nip it off. These right here. Got these in the Wally's World, I believe, uh, like craft department. Really good. Go in here real tight and pop that little tag end off the back side of your crimp. Then, of course, you're going to need crimpers. Mine are broken. I've used these so much. These are cheap sea strikers. The reason they're broken is they're supposed to be a like a bolt and a, and a rivet right there to hold them, help hold them together. You're going to need a pair of these. This is what you're going to need for double barrel swivels. And when I'm talking about double barrel swivels, you probably already know because you've watched the video about how to make the strong arm. See? Here's all my number four three ways. Cross lock to make my strong arms. Cross lock or cross, cross line is uh, the three ways. That's what you want. Then, look at all these. Dulock snaps, number fives. I got absolute bukus. Right? So, this is, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see it. Let's see if I can show you. Let's see if I put it on a piece of line. Maybe it'll be easier to see that way. Alright? Because you're going to need these for making the eggs, for making the strong arms, either way. That's a double barrel swivel. It's got a spot for the line to go through at the top, and then the double barrel means that you're going to turn around and you're going to go back in the other way, right, to make the loop. And you're not going to draw your loop down to like, you know, mouse behind size, right? There is a double barrel swivel. Right, you're gonna crimp that. You always crimp it. Have it up. Stick it in. Crimp it like this. Not lay it flat and crimp it. You want it up and stick it in your crimper. All right. So 
What else can I show you really, really, really fast? Oh, okay. What I did with all these. Well, I'll show you. This is the chest I got off a friend of mine. Look at That's all lead. That's all trout leads. There's, there's some of those same sinkers, but in two ounce. There's some trout leads, right? All kinds of lead. Look at this. Little tiny, tiny, tiny eggs. And I don't like them because the swivel is buried in the lead. They have a tendency to snap off on big fish. But that's a little quarter ounce, okay? And everything is labeled. Everything is labeled. Planer spoons, corks, knives, sheaths, parts, floats, two ounce, floats, one ounce, 35 millimeter canisters. Oh my God, look at all those canisters. Flashlights, mustads, mono, whole drawer full of mono, soft plastics, voodoo, mullet, and kick a mullets. Terminal tackle. Uh-oh, what did we just find? More 35 millimeter film cases. Ball, ball head jigs. There you go, folks. These are the jigs that I was telling you that I will use if we're using a jig. Just that simple jig right there. Eagle Claw Gold 3, I, see, I, see, I think it's a 635 hook, I believe. And that's a half ounce. Fish don't care the color of your lead. All you want is a good, strong hook. All right? And then I did a video about making these. I could use these tomorrow. I took a one ounce, and I crimped it down on a 5 ot mustad hook. I have a video about that, making your own jigs, live or chunk bait jigs. We could be using these tomorrow. I might put these... I might put more of these in the boat. I don't know if I have any in the boat. But we could be using these tomorrow because all we're going to maybe be doing is hopefully getting out to the inlet, putting a chunk bait on here and throwing it to the red, red bass. Soft plastic jig heads. These are just for soft plastics. My oaky jigs. Swing hook jigs. eBay. This guy is fantastic. He makes spinner baits, and then he makes these. You put a soft plastic on these, and you got yourself a swing head jig. I got them in every color they know come in. There you go. There's something for you, bud. Woo! Look at all them. Wow. That is nothing but slab spoons. Then, go down here. Nothing but vertical jigs. Like butterfly jigs, vertical jigging, right? Everything, batteries, tons of batteries, GoPro parts, more swivels. There's my old uh, swivels. I used to sell these on eBay. Open eye, open eye swivels. So you can put these on my micro jigs. Let me get one here. See how it's got an open eye? It's got an open eye, and on this end, it's got a closed eye. I used to sell these on eBay. I kept these for myself. Ten-aught shark hooks. Do you think I'm ready for sharking, folks? Ten-aught VMCs with a permasteel finish. Miscellaneous hooks. Yeah. Shark rigging material. Double hook and drift rigs and cable, real cleaning supplies, must add, 3407, 2-aught and 3-aught, yeah, there we go, I buy my hooks by the 1,000s, 1,000 boxes, so there you go, that's the Jetty Wolf's Tackle Center, yeah, baby, so that's exactly what I use for all my so when I need something, what do I do? I pull out a drawer marked strong arm parts and I'm ready to rock and roll. And I'm making me some stuff. There's a bunch of swivels. 
I only got three or four of these made so far, but like I said, I'm trying to emulate that because these are hard to get and extremely expensive. If I've got the parts to already make for my strong arms, I've got crimps, I've got swivels, I got mason, hard type nylon, and here, there's some mason hard type nylon for you. That was a two pound spool, folks. Mason 8 hard type nylon. I bought this stuff probably over 10 years ago. It cost me about $110 for this spool, and I still have it 10 years later. I also have a spool of 30. All right, so there you go. There's the PBR in a Marine Tech Tools koozie. Got that for free. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Have a beer on me. Take it easy.